Okay, so we're looking at the top purchases you should make when you first get your bike. First purchase I recommend doing is upgrading your grips. There's a couple different options you can look at. Ergon makes a few different styles of ergonomic grips which are super comfy in your hand. They either have either a soft grip to them or a little bit of shape to them so it's going to be just be that much comfier while riding. They also make some full on comfort grips where this is going to get way too big on the trail so you got to make sure you stay away from those. I recommend either the GA3 or the GE1 for a bit more trail grip, still comfy um, and a customizable for yourself in multiple different sizes. Second thing you should definitely purchase, lube. Multiple different kinds of change lubes, lots of different brands. It doesn't really matter which one you get. The muck-off ones smell nice, so that's a nice little feature. Essentially, there's a wet lube and a dry lube for the main two types. The dry lube is designed for drier conditions, as simple as that. The more you ride in dusty, dry conditions, your chain's gonna get gunked up. This one is supposed to prevent that. The wet lube is designed for wet conditions, so when it's super wet, whereas this would get washed away fairly quickly going through stream crossings or in heavy rain or wet, wet mud, this one would actually hold up a lot better. Downside is, because of its tackier kind of uh, properties, it will actually collect dust quite badly. So I definitely recommend one or the other. Normally it's the dry lube for a lot of gravel riding, wet lube for kind of mountain biking depending on the season. But eventually having one of each, you'll definitely do a lot better. Upgrade your pedals. So the pedals which come with pretty much any mountain bike if they even come with a pedal are mediocre at best. They're a plastic one with very little grip to them. Um, going to a full metal pedal, fully sealed bearing, a few different types. Some have the actual lock nut to seal in that bearing. Others just have a really high quality rubber seal. Others have a cheap rubber seal. The bearing spin quality gets better as well, as well as the traction points become metal and some have sharp edges to them or points with adjustability to them. So these can actually be removed and replaced with sharper ones, longer ones, shorter ones. Different brands come with washers so you can make them longer or taller depending on your preference. Multi-tool. Again, there's tons of different multi-tools out there. Some have chain tools on them where you can actually break the chain and repair it on the go. I wouldn't necessarily say get that unless you know what you're doing and how to change the chain and you've looked it up. It's not gonna be the most useful tool for you, but definitely having at least a little tool with a few Allen keys on it to adjust whether it's your headset bolts, which can come loose over time, all your little adjustment bolts on the derailers and such, it's nice to have this. And you can take this on the trail with you or just have it at home if you don't have any tools. This is something you're gonna use over and over and over again all the time, just for your general checkouts. So you clean the bike and you gotta check all your nuts and bolts to make sure. Make sure they're tight. Kind of a three-step one. A few different options again. With the lubing and the tool, you're gonna need something to maintain your bike. So having either a simple bike cleaner spray or remembering to make up something of your own, whether you use a car detailing spray, something you know which will be safe on the disc brakes and the gear cables, and you're not gonna wear away or be too corrosive or abrasive or damaging to your bike frame. The bike ones are designed for bikes and tested on bikes, so you know they're 100% tested. The car ones are normally pr pretty safe. Obviously, they're not all tested on carbon fiber and this organic or, or different types of brake pads that there is. A good scrub brush works. Mukoff makes a whole bunch of different ones, which I actually like their brushes. They have a bigger one than this, which we're, I don't have with me, but it's bigger and it has kind of fine tipped um, brush to it and then coarser behind it. So you can really aggressively scrub it without risk of damage. This one, I'd really take care on your tires and your cassette, just as recommended, and get in there and just keep it clean. The cleaner you keep it, the better it's gonna last. Muckoff, along with a few other brands, do make the full value kits, which I do like. You do get your bike cleaner with it. You do get a bio chain degreaser. Essentially, this will really help rip off the greasy grime that builds up through chain lube and dirt. 
Um, it comes with the chain loop and it comes with a chain cleaner and tool. Tire upgrade, that's the next thing I'd look at. Essentially a lot of bikes come with tires which are designed to work around a huge range of uh, riding styles, whether it's just pavement or just trails. That means you're not always getting the exact tire you need for where you are. You might live in a sandy place, so you might want something with a little more grip and scoop to it like a, a minion or same if you're in the muddy wet areas you want something more traction if you're in dry or hard pack stuff you might want to look at something like a trek xr3 where you gotta get a little smoother the xr2 comes stock on a lot of merlin 5s and the merlin series and a lot of people are using those more on trails and going to an xr3 or 4 you gotta get a lot more trail ready tire Going to the higher end ones with the team issue or the premium ones, essentially you gotta look for the higher TPI. The better the TPI, the smoother that tire rolls. And as well, you can look at things in weight savings and tubeless setup. If you're thinking about going tubeless and your rims are already tubeless, not always are your tires tubeless, so upgrading is a good chance to set up to tubeless at the same time. Last recommendation is this. This is Muckoff's newish product called Foam Fresh. Um, it's actually kind of cool, really simple, probably the least important but the most important to everyone else around you. This thing just has a citrus bus scent. You spray it, it foams up, you put it in your boots, your helmet, your riding shoes, um, if you use knee pads or anything like that, and it just cleans it. It, it works really well. Um, you do have to use a lot more than you think. First time I used it, did a little spray, and eh, it kind of worked. You really need to soak that shoe in the foam, scrub it in there, and then I let it dissipate. It says wipe away. I just leave it overnight and dissipate, but everyone around you is gonna appreciate that your shoes smell better, and using it on your helmet is a nice safe way where you know you're not gonna damage the foams inside and you can actually keep your helmet smelling pretty clean without having to take it all apart. And it is antibacterial as well, so you're gonna be able to just keep it just a little bit more sanitary. And obviously, we probably don't clean this stuff as much as we should. Okay, so this was a new take on a video, a uh, bit of a top down. Uh, still finishing up the setup, it may change, it probably will change. Um, tell me what you guys thought. This was just a quick five minute um, setup, showing you what you should buy. There's so many people asking what upgrades, what upgrades. I bought the Merlin 5, I bought a few of the XA. What is the first thing I should upgrade? Those are the things which are most important to me on your purchase list. Not all of them are upgrades, but the things you are going to need. I just had it gorilla potted to the top of there.